All right, so this week at first I wasn't really sure what I wanted to review because I kind of have a vague schedule drawn up and this was the only week I've gotten blank until November. So for a while I've been planning on reviewing at the very least all the trade paperbacks I can of all the Ultimate series up to Ultimatum at the very least. Uh, preferably I'd like to go through right until now and just keep going every time a new one's brought out. However, not sure how practical that would be or how long that would take us. That's a lot of blooming books. So, um, I believe now I have volume one of every original Ultimate series book. So I have Ultimate Spider-Man volume one, uh, Ultimate Fantastic Four volume one, Ultimate X-Men volume one, and Ultimates Volume 1. That, I believe, is the only four series they had running originally. I think there's an Ultimate team-up, and I don't know where that falls into the reading list, because I have found a reading list for the Ultimate Universe, which I plan on using. Um, so yeah, that's... I, I can't remember if, what order it's in, so I'm going to try and stick as close to that order as possible. So I'm... Um, the first one, of course, the thing that launched the whole Ultimate Universe is Ultimate Spider-Man, so of course it only makes sense to start there. Now a quick bit of background on the Ultimate Universe, so if you're watching this review fresh and haven't, have no clue what this is, you've just seen, I don't know, wherever you buy, on Amazon, wherever, you've seen or have been suggested Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, and you don't know what that is. Well, I kind of touched on this in, on my um, video I did about Marvel possibly having a reboot, which you should check out. Um, however, I'll cover it here again. So, the Ultimate Universe was kind of created, I'm not sure on all the details, but Reading this especially feels like at first it was just created so we could keep telling stories with a teenage Peter Parker. This is from, I believe it's 2000. It may be slightly later than that. It, I don't think it's 2000 exactly. However, there's no clear copyright from what I can see that would tell me. No, sorry, I really should have looked that up. But early 2000s, either way, um, and reading most of this book, it especially feels like it was created just so we could keep telling stories with the teenage Peter Parker. And so, obviously, it begins with his origin. So, as far as reinventions go, there really isn't any here. There's some small changes, but those are mostly just modernizations. They aren't outright character changes, for the most part. There are a few which I'll touch on in a minute. Um, for the most part, it's just now, how would Peter Parker live in an internet age, and so on. So, yeah, that that's kind of one of the things. He's. I like how in this, as opposed to, I don't know, the recent Amazing Spider-Man movies, he, he is very much a nerd. He's He's kind of looked down upon by everyone. Like Mary Jane feels sorry for him, and I'm, I don't know if I like that straight away. I don't know if I like her already being into him before he's Spider-Man, because I feel part of Spider-Man is it's a power fantasy in many ways, which I'm okay with. I'm fine with power fantasies in fiction, like whatever they may be. And I feel kind of it's the idea of him growing out of being this social recluse and so on. And really, Mary Jane is his only friend. He kind of has Harry Osborne, but... I don't know, I, it doesn't outright say it, but in some ways it feels like Harry just uses Peter to do his homework. In some ways. But... In some ways it isn't, because Peter kind of keeps asking him to keep bullies off his back, but... Harry's not very good at that. He keeps telling him, we don't do that, but he doesn't really do anything about it, so there's no real change he can cause. But, um, so then one day he goes out and gets bitten by, it's not a radioactive spider in the Ultimate 
Blueless. It's a genetically modified spider created by Oscorp. Of course, Oscorp is the company run by Harry Osborne's father, who's Norman Osborne. And so that kind of sets him on his path to become Spider-Man. So that's as as much as I can. That's as plot description-y as I'm going to get, because looking at comic reviews online, a lot of the time they suffer from just talking about the plot and not critiquing the plot. So, as an alternate universe, this book really, well, it's clearly an alternate universe, but this may get a bit confusing. It doesn't feel like a universe for the first I would say until the last two issues in this collection, there's very little reference to anything outside Spider-Man lore. This feels very much how many, how the film studios have tried to keep Spider-Man. It's very self-contained. It's just Spider-Man characters. There's no real crossover with anyone else. Until the last two issues I found in this book, and those didn't really make sense where they were thrown in. For example, Peter says something like, I bet this isn't how Captain America does it. However, in the Ultimate Universe, Captain America is very different. He doesn't fight crime. He's part of the Ultimates, who we'll get into that review later on. So that was kind of strange. And at one point, someone mentions, oh, is it the Hulk when... Uh, the Green Goblin is in this, because, sorry. I really need to talk about him later on, so sorry if you weren't expecting that. He is on the back cover there, version of the Green Goblin. But yeah, he, he attacks a certain location at one point, and someone says, oh, is it the Hulk? And that... Reading Ultimates number one, I'm not sure if that makes sense. I, I was a bit confused as to the Hulk, where, how long he's been around. However... I will try and find that out or something, because in a still, in or in a panel in that book, it showed Spider-Man fighting the Incredible Hulk, or the Ultimate Hulk, would it be? I don't know. Um, so, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll keep reading this, see if he does fight the Hulk at any point, and see if it makes sense for those references. But yeah, there's, there's a couple of minor ones like that that kind of took me out of it a bit, because I was like, this feels very forced suddenly. Like, oh, I bet this is now Captain America does it. it. It wasn't built in from the start, so when they start trying to make it a universe, it doesn't really make sense. Like, I think suddenly there's a big, you're a mutant or something at one point, and the ultimate universe is very no, 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 no mutants. So reading that in relation to this, it's weird how accepting they are of Spider-Man, considering people aren't aware of how he got his powers. So that kind of felt out of place. I don't, I don't know. I'll see because Marvel always has trouble fitting in the mutants. So we'll see how that goes as the series progresses and. We'll see how the Ultimate Universe deals with mutants. But, um, but yeah, as an alternate version of Peter Parker's origin, this doesn't really do a lot of new stuff. As I said, there's a few modernizations, but that's mainly what it feels like. It feels very much just like a modernization of Spider Man as opposed to a whole alternate universe. Like, Somehow, if Marvel were to reset solely Spider-Man in their universe, this wouldn't wholly break canon. At all, really, if you think about it. Well, obviously, it would still break canon because there's so much Spider-Man. But you know what I mean, as a modernization or a retelling with fresh eyes or a modern perspective, that's all it really is. So don't go in this expecting, whoa, what radical reinterpretations of character. They're mostly the same, Spider-Man especially. I really like his interplay with Uncle Ben and Aunt May in this. You really get the sense that they care about him, and they're kind of overprotective. And at first I was worried they weren't going to have Uncle Ben say, with great power comes with great power comes great responsibility. However, 
later on he did at first he says what he says in the amazing spider-man movies where it's like something something power something something responsibility and yeah i I didn't like that in those movies so i'm glad we got what great power comes great responsibility because that is a key phrase making spider-man but peter parker himself he's 15 years old and i'll be interested to see how they handle that because I'm not sure how quickly the Ultimate Universe ages with these characters because I I know they very much want this to be teenage Peter Parker so I'll be interested to see how old they let him get considering he's only 15 which kind of limits the number of stories you can tell with him in some ways because he's got to go to school and he can't drink, he can't yeah, they can't have sex, which is weird compared to the Ultimates, which is nothing but drinking, sex, and violence. But um, that's something I actually want to touch on. This is a much the this you could give to a child. This is very much an all ages book. I don't think there's particularly anything. There's a couple of bleeped out swear words, but once again, they're just bleeped. There's there's no extreme violence at any point in this volume. Uh, there's a tiny bit of blood at one point when Uncle Ben gets shot, but that's just it being realistic, and it's not gratuitous, it's not like all over the walls, it's just kind of dried on the ground, so I was okay with that. Um, So that was nice to see. But reinterpretations of character, Flash Thompson's the same, that group of bullies all the same, Peter Parker's pretty much the same, he's kind of a dick in sense but I'm okay with that to begin with because you're not meant to like Peter Parker at first he's meant to grow as a person and change because that's the whole point of him being told with great power comes great responsibility and he's kind of a moody teenager kind of thing but it's not stereotypical to the degree that you'll be like oh my gosh you do not get teenagers this book clearly does and I'm glad for the most part it stayed out of trying to use any slang because that would really age the book there are a few pop culture references thrown in that i don't think they don't age the book horribly but a couple of them i didn't get and they just kind of took me out for a moment but that's all they they weren't a serious issue i had with the book um it's interesting how it seems Mary Jane is his first love interest in this. It's not Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy's not even in this, so I'll be interested to see if they bring her into the Ultimate Universe. Um, because whilst I do prefer Peter Parker with Mary Jane, they're like my favourite couple in comic books until they made a deal with that best. But luckily that's not in here. Um, but yeah, it was nice to see that. However, part of me does feel Gwen Stacy and what happens to her is an important bit of Peter Parker's character arc. However, this is an alternate universe, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects him. But yeah, they're all written pretty similar to their normal counterparts. Mary Jane's just a nice person, and that's nice to see them. Maybe there's some horrible teenage stereotype um so that was nice to see uh the last couple of people i'm going to touch on J. John jameson is almost exactly the same in this uh and of course peter parker does work at the daily bugle within this book and they've changed it so now he works as the kind of web designer i think they call him webmaster actually which i feel is a joke because spider-man webs I don't know, maybe maybe it was unintended, but he kind of runs the Daily Bugle website, and I that, that feels one of the things they've just kind of thrown in to make it modern, but I'm okay with it, I don't hate it, it was just, I don't mind him being a photographer, however, yeah, I, I, it doesn't break it for me, it, I just kind of prefer him as a photographer, but I am fine with him being the webmaster. And the final character I'm going to touch on is Norman Osborn slash the Green Goblin, who I like him up until he becomes the Goblin. 
because first of all, I don't feel the way he becomes the goblin makes too much sense. They like try and recreate the spider bite, and that somehow makes him a green monster that throws fireballs. I didn't get that. I'm not sure what I missed there, but the ability to throw fireballs feels pretty extreme. Like, wow. What? <laughs> How on earth did you get that ability? And as the Green Goblin, he's just kind of... Blah, blah, blah. He, he, do he doesn't have any personality or character to him, so that was disappointing to see. Now, I don't think he's killed off at the end of this. Um... In fact, I'd say I'm almost certain you don't kill off the Green Goblin within the first seven issues of your new Spider-Man universe. So I'll be interested to see if they do anything with him as he comes back. Hopefully give the Green Goblin a bit more personality as the Green Goblin. But yeah, as Norman Osborn, I liked his character. I didn't like him, obviously, because he's a horrible person. But he, he, he was a good... He he was just Norman Osborn, really. He's he's pretty much the same in every version. Where he doesn't like his son. He's very work driven. He's kind of crazy. Because you have to be to become the Green Goblin at the end of the day. But yeah, uh, this is almost a one to one adaptation of Peter Parker's standard origin. He I mean he becomes a wrestler at one point, and I wasn't quite sure on how that worked out with. That, that's where he gets his costume in this, and I was fine with that, but I, I was more just not sure of how they would let him wrestle when he's clearly... When, when he won't reveal his identity to them, but I accepted it. Now, that's pretty much all the plots. I'm briefly going to touch on the artwork. I really like it for the most part. It's bright, it's colourful, it's kind of slightly exaggerated for the most part. It's nothing extreme. And I like, they have a lot of reinvoking of classic Spider-Man poses. Like when he finds the burglar, it's an exact, to my knowledge, to how he originally found him pretty much. And there's, he does a lot of classic Spider-Man poses, so that was nice. Uh, but yeah, aside from that, I don't really have too much to say anymore. I just really like the artwork. It was bright, it was colourful, and that's why I wanted Spider-Man at the end of the day. I don't like Spider-Man to be dark and gritty colouring. It's bright, it's cartoony, and it's exaggerated, but not completely ridiculously. So, in conclusion, would I recommend Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, Power and Responsibility? Yes, definitely, I really love this. I hope I didn't come off too negative, I was just kind of critiquing it. I didn't want it to just be me sitting here going, oh my god, I love this, but I really like it as a modernization of his origin. So I I really hope we get away from it now because we had a good three or four issues where he wasn't Spider-Man in this. He doesn't become Spider-Man straight away and he doesn't really become Spider-Man the superhero until the last one or two issues, I think, maybe three. But the writing's really good, It's it fits the characters without being all slang and awful, but yeah, it, I'm not going to say this is the most accurate representation of school ever, because it's not, and I don't know American schooling, so you, you tell me how accurate it was if you want, but um, so yeah, next I will either... I think Ultimates is the last... No. I will be reviewing Ultimate... I'll either be reviewing Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2 or Ultimate X-Men. Then it will be Ultimates. Then it will be Fantastic Four. And then I'll just keep doing Volume 2 as I go along. So yes, uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I hope you're interested enough to keep watching me review... The ultimate universe as we go through it. I'm, I'm not going to promise I'll review everything. I'm going to just keep trying to review all the major uh, trades of all of the main series and any events that happen I'll try and find. But a lot of this older ultimate stuff is 
getting harder to to buy, which is why I'm trying to buy as much of it as possible now before it really goes out of print. And maybe I'll actually keep doing this, unlike when I said I was going to do all the else ones. I'm still trying to do that, but at the moment I'm caught up in this ultimate universe thing. So look forward to those. Next week, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I may be doing a Daredevil Season 1 review. However, I did a comic review this week, so I may try and do something different. Couldn't see Gone Girl because it's an 18, so I won't be reviewing that. Um, Ninja Turtles doesn't come out for a while. I'm getting Alien Isolation, uh, Shadow of Mordor, and Destiny tomorrow. But I doubt I'll be able to review any of those. Probably until November, but we'll we'll see with those. So, um... Like, subscribe, do what do whatever you want, really. Hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, go out and buy Ultimate Spider-Man if you want to buy a, a trade for whatever reason. It's a great place to start, and yeah, it's Spider-Man. If you like Spider-Man but don't know where to start, I would recommend this. Not over some 616 stuff, but this is a nice modernisation if you want to read modern teenage Spider-Man.